welcome students today in this session we are going to discuss insert about some of the major features of modern periodic table and the periodic properties there so for now without any delay i would like to take you to a segment of the periodic table that contains only the first 20 elements that is what your syllabus includes let's have a look so students here i have made ready with the list of 20 elements that you can see on your screen and in the right top corner of each box you can see with the green writings there that represents the atomic number for your reference and right now along with these inside all those boxes what wherever the elements from hydrogen to calcium are written i would like to write the electronic configuration please have a look in detail hydrogen has only one cell and that is k cell only one electron in k cell and helium has two electrons in k cell however in the case of lithium there are two cells k and l and k cell contains two electrons and l cell contains only one electron and similarly beryllium two electrons and three electrons in both k cell and l cell re cells respectively likewise two and three in boron carbon contains two and four nitrogen contains two and five electrons in k cell and l cell respectively in the similar manner two electrons in k cell and six electrons in the l cell are there in the atom of oxygen in the same pattern my dear students if you check it out two and seven electrons in k cell and l cell are there in fluorine and two and eight electrons are there in k cell and l cell of neon atom as well however starting with sodium one more cell is added in the atoms in series that's why k l m are the three cells present starting from sodium to argon and that's why the electronic configuration in the respective k cell l cell and m cell will be as follows please have a look if you see at argon argon contains two electrons in the k cell l cell contains eight electrons and m cell also contains eight electrons that is how it has the octet electronic configuration and again starting with potassium up to calcium that is what your course covers what we can see over here is that k l m and n cells respectively contain two eight eight and one electrons respectively and in case of calcium two eight eight and two electrons in k l m and n cells are the respectively now before we move on to some of the period properties i would like to deal something how the period number and the group number are assigned in the modern periodic table let's have a look at it so dear students first of all let us understand what period actually refers a period in the modern periodic table it refers to the number of cells period refers to the number of cells present in an atom of an element so in case of hydrogen and helium there is the presence of only one cell for example you can have a look at it that is what one k cell containing one electron in case of hydrogen and k cell itself containing two electrons in case of helium there is the presence of only one cell each that is case in case of hydrogen and helium that's why here what we can say is that hydrogen and helium lie in period number one likewise if we see here in case of starting from lithium up to neon we can see k and l cells that means a total of two cells are there in each of the atoms starting from lithium to neon that's why period number is equal to two similarly the students starting from sodium magnesium aluminium up to argon that is from atomic number 11 to 18 we can see there are three cells in all these atoms and that's why their period number is equal to three i hope that is very clear to you and in case of potassium and calcium we can see k l m and n cells and that is what is being shown very clearly with the electronic configuration 
uh, in the form of numbers only that is represented with the light blue in color at the bottom of each box inside potassium and calcium case that is why they have the period number equal to 4. In the same way if an atom contains 5 number of cells in its atom then it will have period 5 and according so will be the rule applied for others as well. Now students let us analyze something else in this small portion of the modern periodic table from hydrogen to calcium. In this case, let us analyze with the number of valence electrons first. So students, I have shown you the first vertical column that we call a group with the help of an elliptical diagram starting from hydrogen up to potassium. You can see number of valence electrons in all these is altogether one in all these cases. That's why what we can write is that number of valence electrons in all these is equal to 1. And I would like to bring you to a rule over here that if you have to find the group number of a particular element, then a normal or a very simple rule you can apply. Group is written as number of valence electrons that is in Roman form that also in capital letter plus the capital letter A that is what you can do for your label and same rule if you apply you see over here for the reason that all of these they contain only one valence electron that's why the number of valence electrons that is one in Roman is I and then the capital letter A will represent this group in the same way let me show you with this second vertical column that we can say the second group over here. Now, I'd like to make a circle for the balance number of electrons over here. You can have a look at it. All these atoms, they have two electrons in their valence cell. Because of that reason, we can write here number of valence electrons is two. And two, in order to represent in Roman form, writing in capital letter form that is double I and then you add capital A. That's how the group number double I A is for beryllium, magnesium and calcium in this portion of periodic table. The same rule can be followed for the rest of the elements over here. In case of boron and aluminium you can see there are three valence electrons that's why number of valence electrons I wrote here three and that's why the group number is triple I A. Similarly, carbon and silicon number of valence electrons you can see four. So I'm writing here four valence electrons and that's why its group number is I V A. And nitrogen and phosphorus have a look at it. They have five electrons in their valence cell. That is what I can write here five. And that's why we can write here group number V A capital letter A. Similarly, if you check it out in case of oxygen and sulfur, you can see six electrons as the valence electrons in both of these atoms or let's say elements. And that's why number of valence electrons is six and six in Roman format is V, v I and, and then add the capital letter A. That's what we can say the group of oxygen and silicon is VIA and have a look at fluorine and chlorine as well. Both of these they have seven electrons in their valence cell students because of that reason. Here you can have a look V double I that is in Roman form for seven and then plus capital letter A that will make up the group for fluorine and chlorine here. And students right at the moment have a look at it helium, neon and argon. Helium has two electrons in its valence cell. However, neon and argon, they have eight electrons. And here is something that you need to understand and keep in mind. Helium has two electrons in K cell. Because of that reason, it has its duplet electronic configuration. And it has no tendency to lose or gain electrons. And it is totally passive in nature. So in case of neon and argon, they are in octary state 
in their respective valence cells. That means their valence cells contain eight electrons in both of these atoms. Because of this region, these elements are in the octet state, we say, or atoms with octet electronic configuration, they are totally inert in nature. Because of the reason that they are inert in nature and they hardly take part in chemical reactions and thus the, valent, the group number for them is also assumed to be zero. So this is how the inert gases are kept in the zero group. This is how the group number is assigned. Here let me write 7 and either 2 for helium and 8 for rest of the atoms in this particular case. Now, let me tell you how we can find out the valency of different elements. Talking about valency, what you need to understand is that if the number of electrons in the valence cell of an atom is either 1 or 2 or 3 or up to 4, exactly that much will be the valency of that particular atom. That's why for this group of elements, have a look at it. For all these group of atoms, I'd like to write here that this first a group elements, they have valency equal to 1. And second group elements, they have two electrons in their valence cell. And it is also less than 4. That's why 2 is their valency. Similarly, for this third a group elements, their valency is 3. And for fourth a group elements, their valence is 4. However, this valency is based on the sharing or transferring or receiving ability of the number of electrons by an atom. And in order to complete octet, I want to tell you now, all the atoms, they have a tendency to complete an, their octet. I want to show you over here that in this particular case, please understand, in order to complete octet means eight electrons in their valence cell. They already have five electrons. That's why how many electrons are not sufficient? We can see from this calculation, three electrons are not sufficient. So they have a desire to receive three more electrons. That's why their valency comes to be three. I hope that it's clear now to you. In the same way, for this particular group of elements with valence electron 6, the number of valence electrons that are not enough to complete the octet electronic configuration is, octet means 8 minus 6 is the number of present electrons, that is equal to 2. So, 2 is their valency. And in this 7A group elements, what we can see here is that, in order to complete octet means 8, they have seven electrons let us subtract we get the number one means one electron is what they really desire to add in their valence cell that's why one is the valency and in this particular case of inert gases they neither have any desire to gain nor to donate any electrons that means there is no exchange of electrons taking place from them in normal conditions that's why they are assumed to have zero valency because of the reason that they are linear in nature. This is how we calculate valency based on the number of valence electrons that is also seen as a pattern how the number of valence electron also changes in this part of periodic table. Now, I would like to show you something over here. You can see that students as you move from top towards the bottom in a particular group. Every time there is, an, there is an addition of one cell that is like the way we are wearing a garment, uh, for example, let us say a thin jacket and over it another bigger jacket. We appear to be larger in the same pattern, the size of the atom increases as we move from top towards downwards, that is as we move down a group. However, as we move from left towards right, in the same period, the size of atom gradually decreases. It's simply because 
number of positively charged particles the protons at the nucleus of an atom increases and in the cells the number of negatively charged particles that is the electrons also increases and the attraction between the valence electrons and the positively charged nucleus increases as a result gradually the size decreases as you move from left towards right in a period. I would like to tell you the left part of the periodic table you can see excluding hydrogen there are very reactive metals lithium sodium potassium including even magnesium calcium beryllium these are reactive metals as you gradually move rightwards the metallic property gradually decreases and ultimately at the right side of the periodic table you can find only the non-metals. This is how metallic property gradually changes and non-metallic property is seen as we move towards the right side of the periodic table. This is how we can understand some common features of the modern periodic table with the help of a segment of the periodic table for your level. Thank you.